Hey, it's Derek Clamartin from CodeOpinion.com, and I was thinking, what are some of the worst mistakes I've made as a developer? Now, some of these you might be able to relate to, or you might find them extremely odd that I think of them as mistakes, and if that's the case, they might provide you some insights. The first is believing too much on the internet. <laughs> really what I mean is that there's some concept that you're trying to start to understand. You're finding things on YouTube or the internet about that, you're reading blogs, and you get an understanding of what it is, but really, that mass understanding of why the wider community is in fact wrong. Because what starts to happen is as you dig deeper and really get to the roots of the concept, you realize that the vast majority of understanding is way off base. Martin Fowler calls this semantic diffusion, which is there's some term or concept that has a meaning, but as it kind of gains wider popularity, that meaning kind of dissolves or loses its kind of definition entirely. This meme illustrates is once you kind of see past this, you realize that you keep using that word, I don't think it means what you think it means. And I'm gonna give a practical example of CQRS and event sourcing and why that confusion was one of my biggest mistakes, which segues in perfectly to my sponsor, EventStoreDB. EventStoreDB is a new category of operational database built for event sourcing, CQRS, and event-driven microservices. For more on EventStoreDB, check out the link in the description. Probably still today, and it was like this 10 years ago at least for sure, is that if you were to search up something about CQRS, you're bound to find some type of explanation using this type of diagram, where you have a client, and on one side you have a command, and a command bus, and then command handlers. Then there's this domain model that's implying domain-driven design. Then you have events, and you're event sourcing. You're storing these events to an event store. And then those get published to some type of event bus. There's event handlers that de deal with that create some third party uh, read model, some type of projection. Then on the other side of CQRS, you have these queries with query handlers that are using that read model. This is kind of the prototypical example. I hope it's still not today, but I assume it is. And it, it was 10 plus years ago. This was what the coin term was when we were talking about uh, CQRS, which is incorrect. So yes, that diagram is showing CQRS, but it's also conflating it with a bunch of other things and implying it. And people would use the term CQRS to mean a bunch of other things in combination. It was illustrating potentially using domain driven design or at least having a domain model. It was also kind of implying event sourcing, having a projection with a different read model. And it was conflating a bunch of different things. And that for sure was one of my biggest mistakes is not looking deeply enough about different concepts or patterns and just kind of, like I said, just believing the internet. Uh, our industry is full of this, where concepts are kind of mutated, butchered from their original meaning, and they kind of lose it. But you really do kind of have to dig deeper and get kind of that foundational information about where something started and the reason why. So that is for sure one of my biggest mistakes, especially early on in my career, is kind of taking everything at its really surface level and not digging deeper. So another mistake that I made, which in hindsight I can kind of see and really relates to that first mistake, is not really having foundational knowledge about technology or concepts that I was working with. And I realize this is a controversial topic because I'll see it on Twitter slash X every few months where somebody will post something along the lines of, it's some type of quiz question or implying that you should understand something because it's foundational. And then there's a lot of people replying saying, no, I don't need to know that it's abstracted from me. And I can totally understand that, especially if it's kind of these posts that are about like, trivial knowledge, I get it. However, I'm a firm believer in understanding the level of abstraction below you. Meaning that as the example, let's say we're talking about messaging. I have a bunch of videos and that's talking about different concepts in messaging. If you're using kind of a full blown messaging library, it provides a lot of the patterns for you and the implementation of those patterns. So they are kind of abstracted from you. However, you really still do want to understand how they work. Same thing goes with the underlying transports or whatever brokers that you're using. Sure, they're abstracted from you, but you still want to understand when a push comes to shove and you're in the fire of troubleshooting an issue, you need to understand that level below you, even if you are using something that's abstracting it from you like a messaging library, just as my example. So another mistake is just not using my voice enough or expressing myself enough. I kind of now view developers, actually this is beyond developers, just the real world here, is kind of in three modes. It's people that will just complain. So we're talking about developers, let's say we have a code base, it's just developers complaining about the code base. It's a hot pile of garbage, whatever the case may be, but do nothing about it to improve it. Then there's those that actually come up and present and vocalize and try to come up with 
okay, we're feeling this pain, this really sucks, it sucks what I'm doing, but here's a solution, a way out. This is what we can actually do to prevent this even just moving forward. And then finally, it's the ones that will actually execute that. It's sure I'm complaining, then I come up with a solution, and yes, I'm gonna help move this forward in whatever way I can. It's me, it's somebody else, it's a team, whatever the case may be, but actually executing. And I understand context is king. Everybody has a different situation where maybe that only thing you can really do is complain because you're kind of stuck in a situation where you can't really bring solutions forward, they won't let you execute on them, everything just gets shot down. In those cases, I get it. And to me, you kind of have one of two choices change your employer or change your employer. Now you might be thinking, really, I watched this video and you're not telling me about some crazy bug you made or that you dropped a database. Sure, all those things happened, but everything I just referred to really had a significant impact on the code base I'm working in. If you don't understand certain concepts and you're just following kind of the trend of what stuff is, you may be going down the completely wrong path because you don't really understand what you're doing. Having said that with foundational information, if you really don't understand kind of foundational information or kind of the abstraction below you, again, it's just really superficial in the way that you'll develop and design parts of your systems, how you develop your code, you'll really be compromised by that. And lastly, like I'm talking about just not having a voice and not wanting to come up with solutions or execute solutions, you're just kind of wallowing away and living in bad code and producing more bad code, like a solution that just doesn't really work. It's just, it feels worse, you're making it worse. So to me, that's why the those really high level concepts, to me, I know had definitely an impact and growing upon them and improving on them really improved the code bases and the solutions that I'm working in. But of course, I've made some stupid technical mistakes like accidentally restarting the wrong server or something like that. It's all happened. If you enjoy the topics like this and you wanna chat with other software developers, you can join my channel and get access to a private Discord server where you can ask questions, answer questions, talk about software architecture and design. Check the link in the description on how to join. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any other comments, things that you think that are big mistakes that you've made or you've had big insights or aha moments on, let me know in the comments and please subscribe for more videos on software architecture and design. Thanks.